Oh. What's wrong? Didn't you enjoy your breakfast? Oh, it's this castle. Looks a bit spooky after all. <laughs> Smells like ghosts too. Never mind about that. Please tell us your story and then we'll tell you ours. Well, as you've saved me life, it is only fair you should have your own way. <laughs> but I hardly know where to begin. Uh, first of all, I'm a messenger of King Caspian's. Who's he? Caspian the Tenth, King of Narnia, and long may he reign. Mm -hmm. That is to say, he ought to be King of Narnia, and we hope he will be. At present, he is only King of us old Narnians. What do you mean by old Narnians, please? Why, that's us. Oh. We're a kind of rebellion, I suppose. I see. And Caspian is the chief old Narnian? Well, in a manner of speaking. Uh, but he's really a new Narnian himself. A Telmarine, if you follow me. We don't. Mm. Oh, dear. I'm doing this very badly. Uh, look here. I, I think I'll have to go right back to the beginning and tell you how Caspian grew up in his uncle's court and how he comes to be on our side at all. Please do. Yes. yes. Uh, well... Prince Caspian lived in a great castle in the centre of Narnia with his uncle, Miraz, the king of Narnia, and his aunt, who has red hair and was called Queen Pruna Prismia. His father and mother were dead, and the person whom Caspian loved best was his nurse. What he liked most about her was that she told him stories. He did not care much for his uncle and aunt, but about twice a week his uncle would send for him, and they would walk up and down together for half an hour on the terrace of the castle. One day, while they were doing this, the king said, Well, boy, we must soon teach you to ride and use a sword. Hmm? You know that your aunt and I have no children, so it looks as if you might have to be king when I'm gone. How shall you like that, eh? I, I don't know, Uncle. Don't know? Why, <laughs> I should like to know what more anyone could wish for. All the same, I do wish. And what do you wish? I wish... I wish I could have lived in the old days. Huh? What's that? What old days do you mean? Don't you know, Uncle? Oh, when everything was quite different. When all the animals could talk. And there were nice people who lived in the streams and the trees. Naiads and dryads, they were called. Huh. And there were dwarfs. And there were lovely little fawns in all the woods. No. They had feet like goats. And they... Yes, well, that's all nonsense. For babies. Hmm? Only fit for babies, do you hear? You are too old for that sort of stuff. At your age, you ought to be thinking of battles and adventures, not fairy tales. But there were battles and adventures in those days. Wonderful adventures. Once there was a white witch, and she made herself queen of the whole country. And she made it so that it was always winter. And then two boys and two girls came from somewhere, and they killed the witch. And they were made kings and queens of Narnia. Oh. And their names were Peter and Susan and Edmund and Lucy. And so they reigned for ever so long, and everyone had a lovely time. And it was all because of Aslan. Who's Aslan. he? Aslan is the great lion who comes from over the sea. Who's been telling you all this nonsense? Huh? Caspian! I insist upon being answered, boy. Look me in the face. Who's been telling you this pack of lies? Nurse. Never let me catch you talking or thinking either about all those silly stories again. There never were those kings and queens. How could there be two kings at the same time? Huh? And there's no such person as Aslan. And there are no such things as lions. And there never was a time when animals could talk. Talk! Ah, do you hear me? Yes, Uncle. And let's have no more of it. Silva! Sir! Conduct His Royal Highness to his apartments and send His Royal Highness's nurse to me. At once! Yes, sire. The next day, Prince Caspian found what a terrible thing he had done for Nurse had been sent away by the king without even being allowed to say goodbye. He was told he was to have a tutor. The prince felt sure that he would hate the new tutor, but when the new tutor arrived, he turned out to be the sort of person it is almost impossible not to like. He was the smallest and also the fattest man the prince had ever seen. He had a long, silvery-pointed beard which came down to his waist, and his face, which was brown and covered with wrinkles, looked very wise and, 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 and very ugly and, 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 and very kind. His eyes were merry, so that until you got to know him really well, it was hard to know when he was joking and when he was serious. His name was Dr. Cornelius. 
It was your highness's ancestor, Caspian I, who first conquered Narnia and made it his kingdom. It was he who brought all your nation into the country. Oh, you're not native Narnians at all. You're Telmarines. That is, you all came from the land of Telmar, far beyond the western mountains. That is why Caspian I is called Caspian the Conqueror. Please, Dr. Cornelius, who lived in Narnia before we all came here out of Telmar? Uh, no men, or very few, lived in Narnia before the Telmarines took it. Then who did my great great grandsisters conquer? Whom, not who, my prince. Uh, perhaps it's time to turn from history to grammar. Please, wait. I mean, wasn't there a battle? Why is he called Caspian the Conqueror if there was nobody to fight with him? I said there were very few men in Narnia. Oh, did you mean that there were other things? Hmm. Do you mean it was like in the stories my nurse told? Were there. Shh, any... shh, 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 shh. Not, a, not a word more. Don't you know your nurse was sent away for telling you about old Narnia? The king doesn't like it. If he found me telling you secrets, you'd be whipped and I should have my head cut off. But why? Uh, tonight I'm going to give you a lesson in astronomy. Astronomy? But At I... dead of night, two noble planets called Tava and Alanville will pass within one degree of each other. Such a conjunction has not occurred for two hundred years. And your highness will not live to see it again. I don't understand. It will be best if you go to bed a little earlier than usual. When the time of the conjunction draws near, I will come and take you to the tower. The tower? Oh, I've never been to the tower. It's high time to turn to grammar now, your royal highness. I can see everything from up here. Do you know what you see? Those are the western mountains, and down there to the left is the gleam of the great river. Mm -hmm. And I can hear the sound of the waterfall at Beaver's Dam. Mm -hmm. Now, look there, very low in the southern sky, almost as bright as two moons. Those are Tava and Alambil. Are they going to have a collision? Oh, nay, dear prince. The great lords of the upper sky know the steps of their dance too well for that. Look well upon them. Their meeting is fortunate and means some great good for the sad realm of Narnia. Tava, the Lord of Victory, salutes Alambil, the Lady of Peace. They are just coming to their nearest. You have seen what no man now alive has seen nor will ever see again. Oh, it's a pity that tree gets in the way. We'd really see better from the West Tower, though it's not so high. Mm, you're right. We should have seen it even better from the smaller tower. I brought you here for another reason. Oh, what reason? Now, the virtue of this tower is that we have six empty rooms beneath us, and a long stair, and the door at the bottom of the stair is locked. We cannot be overheard. Are you going to tell me what you wouldn't tell me earlier today? I am. But remember, you and I must never talk about these things except here, on the very top of the great tower. Well, oh, that's a promise. But do go on, please. Well, listen. All you have heard about the old Narnia is true. It's not the land of men. It is the country of Aslan, the country of the waking trees and visible naiads, of fauns and satyrs, of dwarfs and giants, of the gods and the centaurs, of talking beasts. It was against these that the first Caspian fought. It is you, Telmarines, who silenced the beasts and the trees and the fountains, and who killed and drove away the dwarfs and fauns, and are now trying to cover up even the memory of them. The king does not allow them to be spoken of. Oh, I do wish we hadn't. And I am glad it was all true, even if it is all over. Well, many of your race wish that in secret. But, Doctor, why do you say my race? After all, I suppose you're a Telmarine too. Am I? Well, you're a man anyway. Am I? Think, my prince. Small, fat, a very long beard. Well, you're not... You're a dwarf? <laughs> so you guessed it at last. Nor guessed it nearly right. I'm not a pure dwarf. I have human blood in me too. Many dwarfs escaped in the great battles and lived on. 
shaving their beards and wearing platform shoes and pretending to be men. They have mixed with your Telmarines. I am one of those, only a half dwarf. And if any of my kindred, the true dwarfs, are still alive anywhere in the world, doubtless they would despise me and call me a traitor. But never in all these years have we forgotten our own people and all the other happy creatures of Narnia and the long lost days of freedom. I'm sorry, Doctor. It wasn't my fault, you know. I'm not saying these things in blame of you, dear Prince. I say them for I know that you also, Telmarine though you are, love the old things. Oh, I do. But how can I help? When you become king, you can be kind to the poor remnants of the dwarf people like myself. You can gather learned magicians and try to find a way of awaking the trees once more.